first, Rob, you had the chance last night to sit down with Bernie and Jane Sanders. Yes, after a rally that was close by here. He's making headlines overnight. He says he is not stopping here at Iowa. He's going all the way to the convention. Now, early on in the campaign, not many expected Hillary Clinton would have such serious competition, but they have. She has, and it's from a senator from Vermont. Sanders is drawing large, noticeably younger crowds at his campaign stops, and I had a chance to talk to him and his wife last night. It sounds like you want to make a political revolution. He's the Democratic hopeful behind that revolution, taking on income and wealth inequality. Enough is enough. I caught up with Bernie Sanders and his wife Jane just hours before the big day backstage after a rally in Des Moines. I think you said that today, that no matter what happens with the caucuses, you're in it for the long haul. Oh, absolutely. I think our message is resonating throughout this country. People want our government to represent all of us and not a handful of billionaires. And I, ca I gotta tell you, Robin, all over the country when I talk about that, people say, absolutely. People are going to finally be able to, enough of the media, enough of the pundits in the polls, the people are going to speak. So what are your thoughts? I think we will win if there's a large voter turnout. If a lot of non-traditional voters, younger people, working class people, lower income people who often do not participate in the political process. If they come out in big numbers, we'll win. If they don't, we won't. And we want to see an enlivening of the democracy. Here in New Hampshire, everywhere else, we want to see people vote, no matter who they're voting for. We want to see them caucus and vote and participate. Hillary Clinton's chief strategist says that you have run the most negative <laughs> campaign in a Democratic primary ever. Ever, my God, going back 500 years. I have tried my best to run a positive, issue-oriented campaign, never making personal attacks against Hillary Clinton, debating the issues. So when they talk about me running a negative campaign, that's just absurd. I've never run in my entire political life a negative ad. Not too many people can say that. Mm -hmm. I heard that you went to the White House and there were only two people who were not wearing a tux, you and Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if there's an inaugural ball, will you then finally? I don't think so. I, you know, I think, you know, I probably got myself in a lot of trouble right now. But, you know, and my wife disagrees with me, no doubt. But a tux is kind of a symbol of class privilege. You know, it says, hey, I'm really important and I'm fancy and... And, you know, you're something else. That's all. Senator Sanders joins me now. You told my colleague recently, Martha Raddatz, with, with tongue in cheek, that you've got a big ego like most politicians. <laughs> yes. How do you stay grounded? It's a very humbling and That's scary, and scary experience because mm -hmm. people are putting so much faith into you that, you know, you don't, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. You know, you don't want to let people down. And in fact, when I, one of the hesitancies I had about running in the first place mm -hmm. was that I didn't want to let people down. Mrs. Sanders, you said this is the reason you fell in love. His idea. Is that why you fell in love? I thought it was my good looks. Standing by his side, wife Jane of more than 25 years, who he proposed to in a friendlies parking lot after being on a break. Uh, was it really true? It in was the parking true. Lot of I know. Were, All right, enough, you were, enough. You were, you were on a break like <laughs> Ross said. <laughs> national television. Why are you? Well, he wanted to go out again, and I said, no. You know, I, I want to get married, so, and I love you, and we're best friends now, so let's not mess it up. And then he had to ask me a couple of times, put his hands on my shoulders, and said, no, will you marry me? And I said, when? Look forward to having you be the commander. I saw the big hug that you gave a veteran yeah. on the way out, and I know, Mrs. Sanders, you said when a veteran stopped you all, when you were on the fence about whether or not your husband should run, that sealed it for you. That is. I mean, people were counting on him, and when people are counting on you, you have to deliver. We are going to make American history on Monday night. Yeah! You were used to this underdog type of position. They always say, he can't win, he can't be a congressman, then he can't be a senator. Each time he's proven them wrong. So, what? this year. What is it that you know? Nice wife. <laughs> I'll take you out to dinner. Okay. okay. <laughs> Last night was his 100th stop here in the state of Iowa. And as you can see, his wife, as often as the case, brings out another side. Another candidate. side, but also, you know, she taps into his core strength, persistence. He had to ask <laughs> yeah. her many, many times. And I yeah. remember I, I was actually working in Congress 25 years ago when he first got to the Congress. And one of the most striking things about Bernie Sanders, his message has been consistent all these 25 mm -hmm. years. And when he ran for mayor, 
10 votes. He won by 10 votes. So he has that tenacity, but he, you're right, he stays on message, he believes in what he believes in, and he has been consistent throughout. And From we'll being see what happens to, yeah, tonight, no question.